welcome to my video about masking fluid, also known as liquid frisket. What is masking fluid? Masking fluid is a liquid latex-based product used by watercolorists to preserve areas of paper that we don't want to paint over. If a shape is large, I can easily paint around it and I would not use masking fluid. But if the shape I want to retain is small, such as a reflection in glass or a thin whisker on a cat, I can apply masking fluid to that area first. In essence, I would be sealing in that shape of paper with this gummy mask latex. I can paint over it and not worry about the paint soaking into the paper. Once my painting is dry, I can remove the masking fluid with my finger or a rubber cement remover and I will have my preserved whites underneath. There are many brands of masking fluid or liquid frisket. My favorite are the Incredible White Mask and Pabello's Drawing Gum. I wanted to explore different tools for applying the masking fluid since it can gum up easily and quickly when you're applying it. Making it difficult to get clean, accurate shapes when you're applying it. I asked several watercolorists what their favorite tools are for applying masking fluid. Quite a few people mentioned the head clay shapers. And quite a few artists also use ruling pens. One artist suggested a syringe. The toothbrush is not for precise application, but it can create a fun splatter effect. Other artists told me that they like to use embossers. I will also be using brushes and at the top next to my two bottles of masking fluid you can see two pen applicators for applying masking as well. I usually paint on Arches watercolor paper so I'm using that to do my testing. I used artist tape to draw out the columns. I have a rubber cement pickup, a cup of water, and dish soap. I put a few drops of dish soap in my water and I find that it helps me clean the tools more quickly as they gum up. I also put a drop of the dish soap on my brushes and don't rinse them out before applying the masking fluid to them and using them to apply masking to my paper. We can use masking fluid to preserve the pure white of the watercolor paper for bright highlights or white shapes but we can also use masking fluid on top of paint to preserve lighter colors when we want to paint darker on top of those lighter colors. I want to experiment with the four different masking fluids you see at the top of my paper. And in each column, I will practice with some masking fluid on the paper directly, but also on some paint. I'm curious to know if any of these masking fluids lift off any paint when they are removed. So in each column I will paint some color and leave half of the column white. That way I can see both how the masking fluid works on white paper and on paint. It's important to never apply masking fluid to wet or even damp paper or paint. Everything has to be 100% dry. If not, the latex and the water and the ammonia seem to bond with the paper and it's impossible to lift up the masking fluid. It will leave bumpy, yellowy areas in your painting and they will continue to yellow with time. So the number one tip is never apply masking fluid to a surface that is not 100% dry. If you want precise, crisp edges and shapes, it's important to practice your different tools. Find the one that works best for you. Although a lot of bottles of Frisket suggest that you should shake it before you open it, I suggest that you tip it over once or twice like I just did. If you shake vigorously, all the little particles of latex inside the bottle start sticking to each other. And pretty soon, instead of a bottle of liquid frisket, you'll have a clump of latex in your bottle. Here you see me applying a little bit of soap to my finger and working it into the brush. 
I don't rinse it out. I go directly into the masking fluid. This seems to allow me to paint with that brush for a little bit longer before the masking fluid starts drying up and getting gummy. When it starts getting gummy, I just put my brush into my soapy water, rinse it out, and get back to masking. It's important to use an old brush that you don't care about or a cheap brush. Masking fluid will definitely ruin a good brush. It's a combination of the ammonia and the latex in it that just never comes out and seems to ruin the bristles. Here I'm applying my second masking fluid. I'm hoping to discover if there's a difference between how well they hold up. As you can see, this one has a blue tint. A lot of artists prefer the tinted masking fluids because it helps them see more clearly where they've applied mask. Masking fluid also comes in orange and in yellow, but I find those colors a little bit harsh. They tend to throw off my color choices. Now I'm trying the different tools. I want to discover which ones give me the crispest, cleanest lines, which ones are easy to use, and which ones are not very helpful. I like this tool quite a bit. This is the ruling pen. Quite a few people suggested using this one. It does give a nice crisp line, but I find that it's a little bit unpredictable as to when the line starts flowing and also when it runs out. I think the clay shaper gave me more control. I'm curious to try the syringe. I fill it up and I try to apply it, but it just comes out in big, uncontrollable globules. The best I can do is use it for dotting. But every other tool I'm using can also be used for dotting, and I just find this really clunky and disappointing. But before I give up on it altogether, I'll try it with the drawing gum. I fill it up and I have the same results. I'm ready to try the embossing tool. It also is a little lackluster. By comparison, the clay shaper seemed to carry more masking fluid and didn't need to continuously be dipped into my masking to get more line out of it. The embossers don't make the cut. Now I'm ready to try using a small brush. Earlier I used the bigger brush, and this is a miniature brush for smaller shapes. Again, I massage a little dish soap into it, and I start painting with my masking fluid. This gives me ultimate control, but not very crisp lines. The masking fluid just gums up and starts drying too quickly and the bristles of the brush show up in these strokes. As soon as I'm done, I want to close my masking fluid bottles because masking fluid dries out quickly. 
If you have a lot of masking to do, I suggest pouring a little bit into a bowl and closing the bottle. I'm curious to try the markers. I've never used these before. It takes me just a minute of tapping the tip to get it flowing. And I'm really happy with how well it flows. It gives some pretty clean lines. Even the lines that don't flow out from the tip cleanly are easy to retrace. This is the Molotow Graphics Art Masking Liquid Pump Marker. This is a great way to apply. Then I try the Pibeo High Precision Masking Fluid Marker. The tip is much thinner than the Molotow. As a consequence, it's harder to get flowing. It needs to be pushed into the paper to get the masking fluid to release. And with such a sharp tip, it does feel like I could be damaging the paper. It's also hard to see if I'm actually applying it. It doesn't show up very readily on the paper. Before splattering with my toothbrush, I cover the areas I don't want to splatter. I dip the toothbrush in there and then just use my thumb across the toothbrush to create splatter marks. There's no precision or accuracy here. That's why I cover everything with paper. If you get masking fluid where you don't want it, on another part of your painting, furniture, clothing, your rug, don't try to wash it off. That water will just embed it into whatever you're trying to remove it from. Instead, let it completely dry. Then you'll be able to just peel it right off. As soon as I apply this splatter, I have to let everything dry. Never try to remove masking fluid or paint over it while it's still wet. Everything needs to be dry. It takes about 20 minutes and then I'm ready to come in and paint again. I'm doing a first layer on what was previously just white paper and a second layer over the areas where I had painted previously. How long it takes for your masking fluid to dry will depend on several factors such as how thickly you applied it, or how warm it is in the room you're working, or how humid it is. Now my paint is completely dry and I'm starting to remove the masking fluid with both my fingers and the rubber cement remover. You can see how stark white the paper is underneath that paint on the left-hand column. On the right-hand column where I had painted previously, you can see how it preserved the colors that I painted first and how the dark color surrounds those shapes. Generally, you should try to remove your masking fluid within a week or two of applying it. Tinted masking fluid can also tint your paper if you leave it on too long. The longer you leave on any masking fluid, the harder it could be to remove it later. Here I'm removing the masking fluid that I applied with the markers. And I'm really pleased with how they both worked. Even the Pabeo with the thin tip on that pen worked out really great. So my favorite tools for applying the masking turn out to be the clay shapers and the markers. And I'm sticking to both of the masking fluids I introduced here. I really love the Drawing Gum by Pabeo and the Incredible White Mask. I'll also keep playing with those ruling pens. I hope you've enjoyed the short tutorial on masking fluid.